Hey guys, Jack here again. In this video, we're going to add and subtract in the first few questions some uh, decimal numbers, and then we're going to divide and multiply some, some harder decimal number questions. So feel free to skip to the question you're after, and the times of those questions are in red. Okay, question six, we are adding and subtracting some decimal numbers now. Now, to be honest, it's very similar just to adding and subtracting full integers. So, we're going to use the same, same technique there. So, put a little line, a little line, a little line, and we can just do basic addition. So, 7 plus 4 is 11, so we put the 1 and carry the 10. Okay, we have 5 plus 1 is 6, plus the 1, 7. Now what we have to do, the only part here with decimals, is you keep the decimal point in the same spot. So I'm going to go straight ahead and put decimal point there, and decimal point there. That's actually the only thing difference between uh, the basic on paper addition and subtraction of decimals and integers. All right. 3 plus 9 is 12, so put the 2 and carry the 10. And 2 plus 5, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus the 1 is 6. So 23.57 plus 39.14. 62.71. Pretty easy. All right, now we have subtracting. So, same thing. 2 minus 1 is 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. Decimal points in the same spot. 8 minus 4 is 4. 3 minus 2 well, this is an easy one. 14.41. Last one. Now, notice here that 14 and 9, this is a two-digit number, this is a 1. If you want, you can put a little 0 here if you want, because... This doesn't actually change 9. 0 and 9 is the same as 9, but this is going to make it a little easier because you have numbers on top of each other if you like doing that. And the exact same here. We can go, if we want, put a little 0 here because 0.8 or 0.80, it actually doesn't matter. Right? If you have 0.8 of a dollar or, or 80 cents, it's actually the same value. So that's what we're going to do there. So let's subtract these numbers. Well, 7 minus 0, well, it's just going to be 7. 5 minus 8, okay. Can't do 5 minus 8 because we can't have negative numbers. So we're going to have to borrow from the next for the next number. Okay, So we change that to a 3 and we can give 10 over here. Right? Actually quite the opposite of what we do over here where we, we carry it. Here we need to borrow from the from the uh, number in front of it. So now we have 15, divided, 15 minus 8 which is 7. Right? Now we have 3, not 4 now. We, they, need, they need one over here. 3 minus 9 well, we can't do that because that'll be a negative number. So let's borrow from here. Make this now a zero. And we put the 10 over there. So we have 13 right, minus 9, which is 4. Right, and 0 minus 0, which is 0. So our answer is 4.77. Question 7, we're going to add and do a little subtract of, of one sort of big question with decimal numbers. Okay? Now... Often, you might run into a bit of trouble if you try and do it all in one step. Now, we have 3.456 plus 12.723, then minus 4.590. So, I like to just do the first first thing first, and then do the second one, right? Because it could get a little bit complicated. So, I'm going to go 3.456 plus 12.723. All right, let's do this addition. We can do this really quickly now because we're good at adding uh, decimal numbers. Right? First thing first, I always keep the decimal point there. And then just simple addition. 6 plus 9. 6 plus 3 is 9. 5 plus 2 is 7. 4 plus 7 is 11. So put the 1 right, and carry the 10. 3 plus 2 is 5. But we have to add this 1. So it turns into a 6. And nothing plus 1. Well, it's just going to be 1. So we have... 16.179. Now we still have to minus this thing here, so I'm going to put 16.179 minus 4.59. Now, 590. Here we can do a pretty simple subtraction. Let's go 9 minus 0, well, it's 9. 7 minus 9, well, we can't do that. We'll produce a negative number, so we need to borrow from the number in front of it. Turn that into a zero, and put the one over here. So now we have 17 minus 9, that's 8. 
Right. Now we have 0 minus 5. Oh, can't do that. We need to borrow from the number in front again. So turn this into a 5. Right. And now that turns into 10. So 10 minus 5 is 5. Now probably what I should have done first is, remember, the only key with when you're adding and subtracting decimal numbers is you have to put the decimal sign straight away underneath uh, the above two. So, yep. Now we have 5 minus 4, which is 1, and 1 minus 0 is 1. So our answer is 11.589. Question 8. Now we have a few sort of just mixed problems here, but I think these can be solved a little easier using some, what they call decimal transformation or, or, or using the decimal number to our advantage, like I, I like to, to call it. So... At the moment, we have 36.5173, some decimal number, and we want to multiply it, or times, by 100. Now, usually, usually when we have a decimal number and we, we want to multiply it by another number, it's quite difficult, and we haven't really explored how to do that yet. But if it's a number that's like 10, or 100, or 1,000, or 10,000, where it's only 1, and then zeros. There's actually a bit of a shortcut what we can do here, okay? I'm just going to teach you the shortcut, and then as you do more practice, it'll probably become second nature to you. All you have to do, if you are multiplying uh, by one with zeros behind it, okay, is you can shift or transform, those words I used at the start, this decimal space, uh, how many zeros there are. So in this case, 100 has two zeros, right? One, zero, zero. So actually, we can shift this decimal sign to the right, right? And to the right, because our answer is going to be now a bigger number, right? This is the same as this, but a shift of, of the decimal two times. And it's going to be a bigger number because we're times in it by 100. So, the shift is going to be to the right when we're times in it by this big number. All right. So, that is the shortcut answer of how to get that question. Now, pretty similar over here. At the moment, we have 7.5. Now, we want to divide it by 10. Now, this shortcut stuff, like I said, where we want to uh, work with this decimal shifting, that works with timesing or dividing by these sort of numbers like 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, where it's just one and then zeros behind it. Now, you probably might have guessed if we times by this number, right, we move it to the right. If we divide, we move to the left. That's pretty much as easy as it is. How many zeros, that's that rule of thumb that I said, does 10 have? Well, it has one. So we shift it once to the left. So we can go point. 0.75. Now, you can put a little zero here, like 0 0.75, or you can just leave it as 0 0.75, but that is the answer to that question. Now, question nine is actually quite a hard question. We're going to multiply decimal numbers. Now, this is actually, this is actually a technique where a lot of people don't know how to do, and you often don't get tested on it, to be honest, after year after early year levels in, in high school. So, uh, we're going to go through a process of how I do it, but... Um, Probably keep in mind in year 11 and 12, when you start doing high level maths, you often have your calculator to do these sort of things. So, this is going to be quite difficult, but let's work our way through it. Okay, this is my step of how to do these questions. I ignore the, de I ignore the decimal sign. I'm just going to rewrite 12, 45, and we want to multiply it by 8. So, I'm going to put it in that form which we did some multiplying of integers in earlier videos, okay? Now, this isn't too hard. We can do this using our normal multiplication techniques. All right, let's do it. 8 times 5 is 40. Now, you put the 0, that's the remainder, and carry the 4. 8 times 4, well, that is 32. Now, we have to add the 4, so it's going to be 36. So, we put the 6 and carry the 3. 8 times 2 is 16. Right, we have to add the 3, so 19. So, we put the 9 and carry the 1. Now, 8 times 1 is 8, but we have to add this one, so it's 9. So, 9960. But wait, that's not our answer just yet, uh, because we forgot about the decimal sign. Now, this is the Fox rule of thumb, if you want, with the uh, multiplying of decimals. In this question, how many numbers were there after the decimal number? In both numbers. Well, here it's just 8. 
So there's no numbers after the decimal number. But here there are two, four and five. So there are a total of two numbers after the decimal. So the rule of thumb is there's going to be two numbers after the decimal in the answer. So put it here. That's our answer, 99.60, because there's two numbers in our answer after the decimal. All right? Now, if you want to really just in your head see if that looks right to you, well, this is 8 times 12.45. If you just did 8 times 12, well, you're going to get 96, right? Then you're going to have some 8 times 0.45. So 96 is very close to 99. So we know that was kind of right. Okay, well, that is actually... The correct answer. All right, let's do the same thing here. Let's use the Fox method of ignoring the decimal sign. This is going to be a little bit longer multiplication, but not out of our capability. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 2 is 2. But remember, if there's two numbers in the bottom here, there's only one here, it's only one line. If there's two, it's the only thing you have to remember. You put a zero here, right? and then we can go on with the second stage. Four times two is eight. Four times six is 24. So you put the four and a two. Four times two is eight plus two, which is 10. Now we have to add these up. Two, six plus eight is 14. So four with a one. Two plus four is 6 plus the 1 is 7, 0, 1. Now, is that our answer? Close. Not quite, because let's use the Fox rule of, of multiplying decimals. How many total numbers were after the decimal sign? Well, there's one here and one here. So, a total of two numbers after the decimal sign. So, we can put a decimal sign there, because there's two numbers after the decimal sign. And that's, again, do that little check in your head, four times about, let's say 25, is 100. So 107.42 is, is pretty close, or it is our answer. Okay, question 10, we're going to divide some decimal numbers. And like question 9, this is quite difficult, but see if you can follow along with my technique. Okay, just like in when we're dividing integers, okay, I want to rewrite this as 3 into or divided by this number. So what's that say? What's actually this asking is how many times does 3 go into 17.64? Now it's obviously not going to go into it, I don't know, 5 amount of times or 6 amount of times because 5 times 3 is 15, but 6 times 3 is 18, right? So it's somewhere in between 5 and 6. So we know, often that's good to know. We get an answer of 26, so we know we've done something wrong there. So, But this is what you do with a decimal number. All you have to do is put the decimal point directly above the decimal point here. And then just carry it on as you would in normal maths. Okay. Remembering how to do this division. Does 3 go into 1? How many times? Well, 3 doesn't go into 1, so... 0. So, we have to now put, carry the 1. Does 3 go into 17? Well, 3 goes into 17. How many times? 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 6 is 18. So, we know it's going to be 5. Right? But what's the remainder? The remainder is 2. Because 3 times 5 is 15. We need to get to 17. So, there's 2 remainder. So, 3 goes into 26 how many times? Now, that 2 is clear enough? Yeah, okay, so 3 goes into 26. Okay, let's see how many times. Well, 3 times 8 is 24. Uh, 8, 24, but still going to be 2 remainder. And 3 goes into 24 8 times, with no remainder. So we've finished our answer. Our answer is 5.88. And like in my guess at the start, I knew it was going to be between knew it was going to be in between 5 and 6, so perfect. Alright, let's use the exactly the same technique to solve this one. Let's rewrite it as 11 divided by or into this big number. Now remember what we did last time, the first step was put that big decimal sign there. Okay, does 4 go into 11? 
Uh, sorry, does 11 go into 4? No, it doesn't. It's bigger than that. So, put a 0. Does 11 go into 49? Well, 11 times 4, okay, is 44. So, it's going to be 5 remainder. 11 times what goes into 51? Again, 4 will be 44. And there's going to be 7 remainder. Okay. 11 times what is 72? Well, 11 times 6 is 66. Right, so it's going to be 6 remainder. And 11 times what is 66? Well, 11 times 6 is 66. So our answer is 446.6. Not too hard, even though the questions look quite daunting, but it's using the technique. Pretty easy. Okay, question 11. This is almost like a bonus question because it's... It's quite a hard question, all right? But I'm going to teach you my technique of how to solve this division of two pretty ugly-looking decimal numbers. Okay. I like to do things the easy way. And in question 10, we solve questions pretty easily. Okay, so if you want to have a look at question 10, we did some division of decimal numbers. But one of the numbers was always a whole number, like 4 or 11 or... or other numbers. Now at the moment we have two that aren't, okay? So what I'm going to do here, this is a technique that you can do, okay? If you want to write this quickly as 0 0.02345 divided by 0 0.07, right? I want to get this bottom number, or this number here, right? As a whole number, like 4, 11, or so and so, so and so. And it's pretty obvious that I want it to get it to be 7. Right? Now, how do I get this to be 7? At the moment, if I times it by 10, I'll get 0.7. If I times it by 100, I get 7. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this now. So like I, all I did was times the top and bottom by a number, which I can do. It's not changing anything. Uh, but I got this to be 7. So the top... I want to times it by 100, right, so I'm going to make it 100 times bigger, I move it to the right. Two zeros, right? so 1, 2. So I'll get 0, point, so 1, 2, actually I'll get 2 point. 1, 2, so we get 2.345 divided by 7. Well done. Okay. That's not our answer yet. That's just the first step, okay? Now we can write this, like question 10, 7 into 2.345. Now, a little quick little technique, which I think I keep subconsciously doing, is a technique that I went well in maths, because before I actually solved the question, I, I did it in my head and thought, what could the answer be? Okay. Well, actually, how many times does 7 go into this number? Well, 7 doesn't go into 2.345 because it's, 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 it's bigger than it. So, our answer is going to be less than 1. So, I know that straight away. So, in a test, if I've got an answer of 4 or 6, I know I've done something wrong. So, that's my little, my little tip for the day. Have a look at it first and see what you'll get. Remember, put the decimal sign above it. That's that rule we did in question 10. Right, how many times does 7 go into 2? Zero times. To carry the 2. How many times does 7 go into 23? Well, 7 times 3 is 21. So we carry the, the, the remainder, 21, 23, of 2. Right, 7, how many times does 7 go into 24? Well, 7 times 3 is 21. So there's going to be a remainder of 3. Right, and how many times does 7 go into 35? Well, 7 times 5 is 35. So our answer is actually quite easy to get. And I know that's the right answer because if I checked at the start, it's going to be less than 1. There's going to be some decimal answer. So there we have it.